We know that 27% of the population in this country, that's over 12 million people, visit cathedrals every year. And I think the reason people value cathedrals and come to them is that they offer a rich variety of experience. Chichester Cathedral is 900 years old and it is almost unique in its blend of ancient and modern. So it, it has architectural styles from every single century across those 900 years. It has Tudor paintings that depict the fraught tension of Henry VIII's reign, uh, paintings of national importance. And we have a lot of modern art. We have a tapestry by John Piper, a stained glass window by Marc Chagall, a painting by Graham Sutherland, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. They come for a whole variety of reasons. They come for concerts and lectures, for talks and for discussion groups. They come to see art exhibitions and theatrical performances. Eight thousand school children come with their schools for activities or for worship. We also relate to charities, local, national and international. Every day we light an amnesty candle. Our welcome here is unconditional. We welcome people of faith and no faith. And we don't charge for admission. And it is our aim that for generations to come, people of any means will be able to come and enjoy this beautiful place. If we had to single out one element of this country's cultural life that sets it apart from everywhere else, I think we would settle on cathedral music as being that unique heritage. Here in Chichester, this tradition goes back at least 800 years. We are indebted to previous generations who've worked hard to lay down the resources to sustain this amazing tradition. And now it's our turn. It costs £18,000 a year to educate a chorister. They attend the Prebendal School. It's a busy life. During term time, the choristers are working six days out of seven, and they sing seven choral services each week. They rehearse at lunchtime, and then they come back after school to prepare for Evensong. And on Sundays, they sing three services. But it is an amazing opportunity, and it lays down some very important skills that go with them through their lives. There's the teamwork, the concentration, the focus, the sense of professional performance. The Dean and Chapter of the Cathedral are committed to providing a 50% scholarship to every chorister. But we want to be in a position where we can offer a place with 100% funding, if necessary, to any boy who has the potential and the talent and the aptitude to benefit from the chorister life. In order to ensure that places in the choir will be accessible to children regardless of financial circumstances, we have set up a choral foundation fund. And we hope that that will help to guarantee the quality of music here at Chichester into the future. The Friends were founded in 1939 and today there are about 1,500 members from all walks of life. The Friends exist to support the cathedral and to help maintain and improve the facilities for visitors and the wider community. They fund particular projects, often quite large things like they paid for the St Richard statue which is outside the west door of the cathedral. But in my time here, um, certainly we paid for the installation of a new lift in Vickers Hall, a new sound system in the Lady Chapel and very importantly refurbishing the toilets. We've actually paid for 
some of the specialist cleaning of the artworks in the cathedral, which is just so important to keep those. We've also bought a grand piano for the free concerts in the cathedral. There's a cultural and social side to being a friend as well, which is so lovely. There are all sorts of discussion groups and coffee mornings and lectures that people can attend. And probably um, one of the best ways to hear about us is, would be to come to one of those events. When we do receive uh, legacies and indeed subscriptions and donations, uh, they always go towards something really worthwhile to enhance the, the public's access to the cathedral and to make it more user-friendly. Well, I was invited to become a member of the Chichester Restoration and Development Trust about four years ago. And I was thrilled to be asked, in fact, because I've known the cathedral all my life. The trust was actually started in 1980 by a group of philanthropists. This lady chapel in which we're standing here today had one million pounds spent on it. It took two years to complete. One of the most important things that the Trust has been able to achieve is the restoration of these very well-known Tudor paintings in the cathedral. They are one of the two largest Tudor paintings that we still have in the country. There are three major projects that we'd like to undergo. One is the copper roof. It is deteriorating rapidly and rain is coming in. One is the cloisters. If you look up at the ceiling, you can see skylight. The rain is coming in and again, the woodwork is being damaged. And of course, the medieval or 15th century bell tower, which is going to require extensive renovation to its stone. The trust has an enormous challenge ahead. A medieval building always needs work in terms of restoration and upkeep and we have to provide that money because we have no state funding given to us. Now we try to resource that in various ways. We have a cafe and a shop. We use venues around the close for weddings and so on. And in the past, we've also been greatly helped by people leaving to us legacies. When it comes to making a will, clearly the first thing we should be concerned about is those we love. But beyond that, sometimes people want to leave to a charity or to a special place. And what I would say to them is that this place reflects love in all sorts of ways. The love of God, the love of community and people, the love of art and music, of history and heritage. People can leave money to the cathedral in various ways. They can leave it to the chapter of the cathedral who maintain the life and the community. We don't charge for admission and it is our aim that for generations to come, people of any means will be able to come and enjoy this beautiful place. They can leave it to the Choral Foundation Fund which focuses specifically on music. They can leave it to the friends of the cathedral who are concerned with the beautification of the building or to the Restoration Development Trust which are concerned with preserving the fabric and the heritage of this place. All those four organisations are registered charities and they are all essential to actually preserving the life of the cathedral for generations to come. <laughs>